Hello everyone. Today we are going to start with a new topic which is called as a human reproduction. Now in this chapter we have various concepts that we are going to study. The first thing that we are going to study in this topic is a male reproductive system. Second is female reproductive system. Third one is a structure of the mammary gland and its uh, characters. Then gametogenesis in which there are two parts spermatogenesis and oogenesis. Then the menstrual cycle, embryonic development in the humans, pregnancy and the uh, gestation period. Then how exactly the embryo develops in the womb of the mother, its complete scenario and then parturition along with the lactation. So this is regarding the human reproduction. Then let's study these concepts one after the another. Now in this human reproduction, now almost we know that all the mammals that are present in this entire world, they are sexually reproducing organisms along with the humans also. And in this uh, humans, the reproduction starts at the phase of puberty. Puberty meaning sexual maturity. Now, let's see the concepts. The first part is regarding the male reproductive system. Regarding the male reproductive system, now here we come across a primary sex organs, secondary sex organs and accessory glands that helps in the formation of the gametes, transfer of the gametes and also finally helps in the process of fertilization to carry out the gestation period till parturition or till the process of delivery. Now in the male reproductive system, we are having different parts where we just divide into first one is a primary sex organ then second one is a secondary sex organ and third one is a accessory glands The first one primary sex organ. Primary sex organs are those that produces gametes. Then the primary sex organ it includes a pair of testes. So a pair of testes are present in male reproductive system where we call them as a primary sex organs. Why do we call them as a primary sex organs? Testes are called as primary sex organs because they produce gametes. Then which is the male gamete? Male, yes, male gamete is called as a sperm. Then secondary sex organs. Secondary sex organs are those which do not produce any gametes but they are involved in transferring the gametes, male gametes to reach the female reproductive tract. And they include Retate testes, then Vasa efferentia, epidemis, Vas difference, and urethra. along with the male external genitalia, the penis. So all these are the secondary sex organs. Then accessory glands or we call them as accessory ducts. Accessory ducts are those that will produce fluids and these fluids are also released through the male external genitalia when they fuse with the sperm to form into semen. So accessory glands includes a seminal vesicle, then 
then prostate gland and cowper's gland this cowper's gland is also called as a bulbo urethral gland now why cowper's gland is called as bulbo urethral gland we can just see it in the diagrammatic representation of the male reproductive system so let's check out the diagrammatic view of the male reproductive system okay now when we come across the male reproductive system already we discussed the primary sex organs which are present in the males that includes a pair of testes here now pair of testes they are present in the lower abdomen outside the body in a sac called as a scrotal sac which is a skin fold now these have various compartments testis has many compartments or we also call it as a testicular lobules then inside these testis we have certain tubules so different uh, tubules are present here and uh, these tubules are called as a seminiferous tubule and uh, they arise from it arises a structure called as a rete testis and uh, from the rete testis arises a structure called as a epididymis and uh, from the epididymis a long tube like structure these tubes arises this tube we call it as a vas deferens and uh, this vas deferens is the longest tube that measures around 35 to 40 cm in its length and uh, here we come across certain ducts where we call them as a seminal vesicles and uh, here we have a largest gland where it is called as a cowper's gland and below the cowper's gland small p shaped glands we call them as sorry this is prostate gland this is cowper's gland and uh, here we come across the male external genitalia the penis okay so this is regarding the structure of the male reproductive system okay now in this case in the male reproductive system the parts 
that we observe here in the diagrammatic representation. Okay, now here. Now here we can easily observe testes. A pair of testes are present. And these a pair of testes, they are present in a skin fold. The lower part is a skin fold. And this skin fold, we call it as a scrotum. Or it is also called as a scrotal sac. Then this is the testis. Pair of testes are there. Then from the testis, what arises is a, this is a rete testis. Above this, here we have a structure. This is called as a vasa efferentia. Vasa efferentia. Then below this, this is epidemis. Then a long tube that arises. This is called as a vas difference. And here it joins into urethra. The central part that we can see here, this is called as a urethra. Now, here we find certain glands. Now, out of these, this is called as seminal vesicle. This is a prostate gland. And the structure that we see here, this is called as a bulbo-urethral gland. Okay, and uh, the external male genitalia, this is called as a, a penis. And uh, at the tip, this is called as a glans penis. And uh, the external opening, this is a urethral meters. And the skin that is present on the external genital, this is called as a foreskin. Or it is also called as a prepuce. So if we look at the structure of a the male reproductive system. What are the parts that we find here? As we have discussed in this first part, primary sex organ is testis. So how many are there? A pair of testis are there. Secondary sex organs, so look at the secondary sex organs here. Secondary sex organs includes, this is the rete testis, then arise from the rete testis is vasa efferentia, from this arises the next part which is called as a epididymis and from the epididymis arises a long tube like structure that measures around 35 to 40 centimeter or say about 17 inches long is a vas difference. This vas difference joins to the urethra. Remember urethra is the common passage for urine and sperm in the male reproductive system. Now here we have the urethra. The vas difference joins to the urethra at a region called as a ejaculatory duct. This is called as a ejaculatory duct. Then ejaculatory duct where exactly it is present. Now these are seminal vesicles as we came across the accessory glands here. There are three accessory glands which are present in the male reproductive system. A pair of seminal vesicle here we have the prostate gland, here we have the bulbo-urethral gland. So, seminal vesicles, when they join at the urethra, it forms the ejaculatory duct. So, this part we call it as a ejaculatory duct.
where the semen is ejected. Okay, now let's study all these parts one by one. So primary sex organ, when we come across the testis, testis is the primary sex organ. So how exactly is the testis? Let's see the characteristics of the testis, its structure and its function. Okay, when we come across the structure of a testis, now testis, if we look at its length, length will vary, the length of the testis varies from 4 to 5 centimeters long and the width varies from 2 to 3 centimeters. Okay, so slightly the size and the length also may differ 3 to 4 centimeter or 4 to 5 centimeter width 2 to 3 centimeters of the testis. Now where the testis are located? The testis is located in a skin fold called as a scrotum and the temperature of the testis is little bit less. So the temperature of the testis is 2 to 2.5 degree less 2 to 2.5 degree Celsius less than the body temperature. So look at this. Why the temperature in the testis should be low? Because for proper spermatogenesis, for the proper formation of the sperms. What will happen if the temperature in the testis increases? It kills the sperms. High temperature will kill the sperm. That's why the temperature in the testis has to be retained 2 to 2.5 degree less than the internal body temperature. So that proper spermatogenesis or proper formation of sperms should take place. Okay, so this is regarding the testis. Then, if we look at the transverse section of the testis, what are the parts that we can observe? Now, if we take the TS of the testis, so here we have one semiferous tubule, this side we have one more semiferous tubule, here we have one more semiferous tubule, this side also we have different types of semiferous tubule. Now in this semiferous tubule, we have larger cells. We can identify the larger cells. Now these are larger cells. These are the larger cells. Where we call them as a Sertoli cells. The larger cells are called as a Sertoli cells. Now, Testis is lined mainly by two different types of cells. One is the germinal cell, second one is the Sertoli cells. Now here the germinal cells are present. Now these germinal cells, we call them as a spermatogonial cells which are present inside each of these tubules. Okay, now what exactly we observe here? In the transfer section of the testis, when we cut into its a transfer section, we observe many tubule, tubular structures here. These each tubule is called as a semiferous tubule. So each tubule, this is one semiferous tubule, this is one more semiferous tubule, this is also a semiferous tubule, even this is also a semiferous tubule. Then how many semiferous tubules are present in the testis? Okay, now if we look at the testis, look at the part here. Now, in each testis, there are certain compartments. These are called as a compartments. So, around 250 compartments are present in each testis. How many? 250 compartments are present in each testis. Now, these, each of these compartment, where we call them as testicular lobules also. Each of these testicular lobule or testicular compartment consists of a 1, 2, 3 semiferous tubule. So how many compartments are there in each testis? There are around 250 compartments. Each compartment consists of how many semiferous tubule? 
वन टू थ्री सेमीफेरस ट्यूबल सो दीज टू फिफ्टी कंपार्टमेंट आर ऑल्सो कॉल्ड एज अ टेस्टिकुलर लोब्यूल्स ओके नौ we are exactly observing the testicular uh, tubule and uh, we are just seeing the seminiferous tubule inside the testis here now this seminiferous tubule consists of uh, mainly two types of cells larger one sertoli cells and here we call them as a uh, germ cells and uh, these germ cells uh, they are also called as a uh, spermatogonia they are spermatogonial cells or they are also called as a germ cells you can also call them as, as the germ cells now what is the function of sertoli cells and what is the function of spermatogonial cells the function of the sertoli cells is a, it provides nourishment for the growing spermatogonial cell and these spermatogonial cell ultimately form into primary secondary tertiary spermatocyte spermatids and uh, forms into and matures into sperms so sperms are present in or formed in each seminiferous tubule so this is how the sperms are produced this is how the sperms are formed in each of the seminiferous tubule okay now look at this part the function of the sertoli cells will be certainly asked even in the exams also either it is an objective part or a descriptive part so what is the function of sertoli cells remember it very carefully the function of the sertoli cells is it provides nutrition or nourishment to the germ cells or spermatogonial cells so that the process of spermatogenesis the formation of sperms will occur properly in each of the seminiferous tubule okay now in between two seminiferous tubules in between these two seminiferous tubule there is a space there is a space now this space is called as a interstitial space the space is said to be interstitial space now in the interstitial space there are certain cells in the interstitial space there are certain cells these cells they are called as a leading cells or they are also called as a interstitial cells look at this the cells which are present in between two seminiferous tubule in a space called as interstitium it is called as a interstitial cell or it is also called as a leydig cell leydig is name of a scientist who first identified these cells that's why it is called as a leydig cell now what is the function of leydig cell the major function of this leydig cell is it it is responsible for the production of a male sex hormone called as a androgens and the principal androgen is a testosterone and hence the function of the leydig cells is a production of the male sex hormone called as testosterone okay so testosterone is produced by leydig cells then what is the function of the testosterone we have various different types of functions testosterone is very important for spermatogenesis testosterone is also responsible for the secondary sexual characters in the males like development of facial hairs like mustaches and beards development of body hairs muscular body and other characters then testosterone is also most important for the erection during insemination at uh, insemination of the semen so this is regarding the function of the testosterone hormone produced by the leydig cells of a interstitium in seminiferous tubule okay so this is regarding the part of the testis and how exactly the sperms are produced where exactly the sperms are produced so sperms are produced in the seminiferous tubule now tell me how many seminiferous tubule are present in each compartment 1 to 3 seminiferous tubule how many compartments or testicular lobes are present in each testis 
250 compartments. Where are testes located? Testes are located outside the body in the lower abdomen in a skin fold called as a scrotal sac. Then what is the temperature of the testes? 2 to 2.5 degree less than body temperature. Remember the temperature of the testes is not 2 degree Celsius. Its temperature is a 2 to 2.5 degree less than the body temperature. Suppose if our body temperature is 37 degree Celsius, the temperature in the testis will be around 35 degree Celsius. Okay, it doesn't mean that the temperature is too much low in the testis. Okay, so this is regarding the clarification of the temperature of the testis. Okay, now let's go to the next part. Now, after the testis, as we came across its structure and its function, Arising from the testis is a rete testis. So many tube like structures where from which the sperms will enter from the seminiferous tubules, sperms will enter into tubular structures called as rete testis. From the rete testis, the sperms enter into one more tubule called as a vasa efferentia from both the sides. The same thing is there. Vasa efferentia. From the vasa efferentia, the sperms will enter into higher next coiled part called as a epididymis. Now if we look at the structure of an epididymis in the testis, okay now if this is the testis, if this is the epididymis, epididymis is the coiled, uh, highly coiled part. Now here this epididymis is divided into three parts. The first part is called as a caput. The second part is called as a corpus and the third part is called as a corda. These are the parts of epididymis. Look at this. The first part is called as a caput where we also call it as head of epididymis. Middle part is a corpus. Third part is a corda. From the corda arises vas difference. Now, what is the function of epididymis? It helps in storage of sperms because when the sperms are produced inside the testis, somewhere they have to be stored. So, they are stored in the epididymis part. Okay. Now, epididymis is involved. It is the highly coiled part and it helps in storage of the sperms. Now, from the epididymis arises a long tube called as a vas deferens. Then, what is the length of the vas deferens? The length of the vas difference is 35 to 40 centimeters in its length or say about 17 inches in length. Where it joins? It joins to the urethra. Okay. Now as we say urethra is the common passage for urine and sperm. Now here we have certain tubes. This is the ureter which comes from the urinary bladder. It comes from the urinary bladder. The ureter comes from the urinary bladder through which the urine is expelled out and uh, through the ureters. The urine comes and joins the urethra. This is the urethra where we call it as a common passage for urine as well as sperms. Now, here attached to the urethral region, we have certain glands a pair of seminal vesicles, a large prostate gland and a small P-shaped glands called as a bulbo-urethral gland. Now they are called as a bulbo-urethral gland because they appear bulb-like in structure as it was first time found by a person called as a cowper and hence the gland name is also called as a cowper's gland. So bulbo-urethral gland is also called as a cowper's gland. So what is the other name of bulbo urethral gland also called as a cowper's gland. Okay. Now what is the function of seminal vesicle? Seminal vesicle will produce a fluids. Seminal vesicle will produce a fluids. Those fluids it constitutes of about 60% of the fluids of a semen that includes more quantity of water then it includes a certain calcium also, salts also, certain enzymes also. And it is also rich in 
fructose also so seminal vesicle will produce a fluids of the semen 60% of the fluid seminal fluid is by seminal vesicles a pair of seminal vesicles are there these vesicles join to a structure called as a ejaculatory duct through which the semen can be released into the urethra then coming to the next one prostate gland prostate gland is the largest gland in the male reproductive system which measures to a size of a golf ball so that's why it is a little bit larger now prostate gland it also produces seminal fluid and this fluid constitutes of around 25 to 30 percent of the total semen so well, prostate gland also produce around 25 to 30 percent of the semen seminal vesicles major which uh, produces around 60 percent of the semen then coming to the next one bulbo urethral gland these bulbo urethral gland do not produce fluid but they produce certain secretions that secretions or that fluid helps in lubrication helps in neutralizing the acidic medium of the urethra and it also helps in lubrication during coitus or a sexual act during the intercourse it helps in formation of a certain fluids that helps in lubrication so the lubricating fluid is produced by bulbo urethral gland or which is also called as a cowper's gland okay then this is the urethra the urethra opens outside through urethral meters this is called as urethral meters then the external male genitalia we call it as the penis this penis is divided into two parts the first part is called as the shaft and the end part or the tip part is called as a glans penis the glans penis is little bit bulged and hence it is also called as a head of the penis and this is the shaft now the penis as it is the male external genitalia it is made up of certain spongiosum tissues also and the erection occurs due to rushing up of the blood or a flow of the blood into the tissues of the penis and due to that only there will be an erection and hence it is made up of a certain soft tissues and the external genitalia which is called as the penis it is covered by a skin fold and this skin fold is called as a foreskin so foreskin is present at the tip of the penis or head of the penis so this is regarding the part of the male reproductive system so in the male reproductive system we have all these different terms and terminologies where we come across the primary sex organs called as the testis which produce the sperms then the secondary sex organs which do not produce sperms but they are involved in transport of the sperm these are involved in the transport of the sperm and the function of the male external genitalia the penis is to for insemination or it helps in introduction of the sperms into the female reproductive system for the process of fertilization okay so this is all regarding the concepts of the male reproductive system okay now as far as the male reproductive system is concerned regarding this almost we come across various types of concepts and regarding the formation of the sperms in the testes where we call the process as spermatogenesis again we are going to study it in detail in the heading called as a gametogenesis and uh, the continued part of the male reproductive system the next part includes the female reproductive system that we are going to study in the upcoming videos so stay tuned till now